Founded in 1692, Coots Bank is the eighth oldest bank in the world. The headquarters were originally established in 1739, although the current location at 440 Strand has been used since 1904. During the mid-1970s, the bank's premises were reconstructed behind the original Georgian facade. The British royal family are notable clients. The calm and conservative atmosphere of the bank began to change in 1992. Several female staff reported disturbing phenomena and unusual goings on. A bank spokesperson told a reporter from the Times newspaper that staff had reported strange happenings like lights going on and off and an apparition, a shadow was how it was described. Alleged paranormal activity seemed to focus on the computer room with malfunctioning equipment and extreme temperature drops. Engineers were called in but were unable to explain the activity. Members of staff witnessed dark shadows crossing the atrium and the directors became increasingly concerned. Close to the main entrance, a vague human shape lacking a head was seen in both the daytime and the early evening. Of course, the phenomena could be due to electrical malfunction or human imagination, but the frequency of these apparent sightings became such a concern that the directors at the bank called the College of Psychic Studies in Kensington to investigate in November 1993. The college arranged for psychic medium Eddie Burks to investigate hoping he would be able to lay the spirit to rest at last. Eddie Burks was an English healer and medium who became famous for his work in releasing earthbound souls. Eddie claimed to make psychic contact with the souls and help them to find a way to fully enter the other spiritual side. Burke's spiritual release work was helped by spirit guides or presences. Burke claimed that the guides would lead the spirits to find him so he could telepathically talk and listen to the souls while persuading it to move on. At Coote's Bank, a seance was held and Burke's made contact with the unhappy spirit of a man. According to Burke's, the dejected spirit began communicating about his life. He said, I have been waiting a long time. I practised the law. I would not bend to the Queen's command conveyed to me through her servant, who held the great seal, so a case of treason was trumped up. I was beheaded on a summer's day, which made me loath to depart. Burks, who initially could only hear the spirit, was now able to begin to see the vision of the man. Burks claimed that he was tall and slim, with a thin face and wearing Elizabethan finery, and proceeded to describe the man out loud to the rest of the group. The spirit showed Burks the rings on his hands and a chain and a medallion around his neck. He explained that the ruff he wore around his neck was taken off before execution and passed on to his son. Beginning to believe that Burks could assist him, the spirit said, I have held much bitterness and I must let this go. In the name of God I ask for your help. My hope is growing. If you can get me from this place, I shall be much obliged. I wait upon you. Burks was able to see the man head towards the light before turning back and thanking Burks for helping him. After this, Burks asked the Coots archivist to see if they could uncover any answers as to who the man was from the limited facts that he shared. Father Francis Edwards had read about the haunting in the newspapers and had a suspicion he knew who the spirit was. As a member of the Royal Historical Association, and given the facts that the spirit had studied law and had been executed under Elizabeth I, Father Francis was able to identify the spirit as Thomas Howard, the fourth Duke of Norfolk, who lived from 1538 to 1572. Thomas Howard's involvement in the Ridolfi plot to assassinate Queen Elizabeth I and replace her with Mary, Queen of Scots, and restore Catholicism to England was the reason for his execution. The Duke was charged with treason and beheaded at Tower Hill, two miles away from the bank. 
historically Howard's family owned property in the area of the Strand and Burke's believed that might be why his spirit had become trapped in this location. Tower Hill was one of the primary locations for public executions and punishment for many years. The manner of execution depended on the social status of the victim. Beheading was largely reserved for the rich and famous members of society, as it was considered the least brutal method. Tower Hill was often used to end the lives of those who had become inconvenient to the monarchy, rather than actual traitors. Commoners were usually hanged at the gallows at Newgate Prison or Tyburn, commonly called the Tyburn Tree, the location of Marble Arch today. Today, a memorial to those who were executed at Tower Hill stands in the Trinity Square Gardens. The panel reads, to commemorate the tragic history, and in many cases the martyrdom, of those who for the sake of their faith, country or ideals, stake their lives and lost. On this site, more than 125 were put to death, the names of some of whom are recorded here. After the spirit of Thomas Howard was released from Coote's Bank, a Catholic memorial was held in Corpus Christi Catholic Church in Covent Garden on the 15th of November, 1993. The congregation included the Duke and Duchess of Norfolk, who gathered to say prayers for the Duke's restless soul. The event at Coots had made it into the national news, and at the memorial service, the Duke was asked by a reporter if he was happy that his distant relative was finally at peace. He replied, Actually, I don't believe in ghosts. The strange happenings at Coots Bank, Strand, had finally come to an end.